when the nurse came running and told the news that the baby was being tied up and brought to the street, the hearts of the three people were excited. Kundave's heart fluttered more. Goddess! Shall we go and see what the poor fellow's face looks like? said Nandini. Kundave hesitated, what about him? She said. All right then. Nandini said carelessly. I'll go and see, said Kandan Moran, knocking and getting up. No, you can't walk, you'll fall. Said Nandini. As if Kundave had changed her mind, let's see how his dear friend is doing. Can't we see from the top of this palace? She asked. Well known, come with me. Nandini got up and walked. Kandan Moran said, Goddess. If he is my friend, tell my uncle and arrange for me to meet him. He said that. How do we know he's your friend? Said Nandini. Then I'll come too. Kandan Moran said and walked away. The three went to the front porch of the palace. Seven or eight horses were coming at a short distance. Warriors were coming upon them. A man walked among the horses. His hands were tied behind his back with a rope. Horsemen on both sides were holding the two ends of the rope. A few feet away from the players was a crowd of merrymakers. At first the face of the man walking among the horses was not visible to those who saw it from the palace roof. The palace was silent on the high ground until the procession drew near. Kundave's eager, worried, squinting eyes were fixed on the approaching procession. Nandanayo peeked into the street and immediately saw Kundave's face. Kandan Moran dispelled the depression that was lingering there. No, this man is not a god. He said. Kundave's face lit up. At that time, the strange procession had arrived at the bottom of the palace. The man who was walking among the roped horsemen looked up. Kuntava learned that he was the son of a doctor. Kuntava did not express his happiness and said, What madness is this? Why are they holding him and dragging him? Isn't he the son of an old doctor? She said. He looked up and opened his mouth as if he wanted to say something. By then, the rope that bound him on both sides was pushed forward. Oh! Is that so? My brother-in-law's men are always like this. They leave the real culprit and catch someone and come and trouble them. Said Nandini. Meanwhile, Kandan Moran said, Will Vandiyadeva get caught by these people so easily? My friend is the great Indrajith. Will the one who cheated me get caught by these people? He said. You still call him your friend? Said Nandini. He is gone as a traitor. But my love for him has not changed. Said Kandan Marin. Nandini said and looked at Kundave's face, Perhaps they have killed your beautiful friend. I heard that these soldiers went to Kadakare following two spies. She learned that the word could have killed sent Kuntavi shivering. Arrogant feet. Got a good weapon to take revenge on you. If I do not use it regularly, I am not the youngest queen of Palavu. Wait. Wait. Kuntave turned his anger into anger and said, Spies at least. It's just nonsense. These old men have lost their wits. I doubt anyone. I sent this doctor's son to bring herbs to Kodakare, didn't I? Why have they arrested him? I'm going to ask your brother-in-law right now. She said. Oko. Is this the one you sent? Devi. You said doubt? I have a doubt now too. Did you send only this one to bring the herb? Did you send another person as well? Asked Nandini. I sent another with him. I told one of the two to go to the island of Ceylon. Aha! Now I understand everything. It has happened just as I suspected. I don't understand anything. What did you suspect? What happened? No more doubt, sure, goddess. Did you already know the man they sent with him? A new man. Kundave hesitated a little and said, A new man? An old man? The one who brought the straw from Kanchapuram, the one who came from my mother. It's him. It's him. Who is it? He is the one. 
here too he said that he brought straw to the emperor. Why did they suspect him of being one? What do I know about that? It's all men's business. If you look at it, the fellow has behaved suspiciously. Otherwise, why should he run away secretly at night? Why should he stab this old man in the back? I don't believe that he stabbed him in the back. If he did, why would he take him back and leave him in the dumps house? You tell it like you saw it, goddess. You have so much compassion for that one man. He must have some magical power. He still calls him his friend, doesn't he? So what? The lost life isn't going to come back. If these soldiers kill him. Sweat dripped down Kundave's face. Eyes red. Throat blocked, chest pounding. She said to herself, that never happened. Never ever. If that one is as bad as he says. She said. Yes, princess. Vandiyadeva will not be caught by these men for a day. Said Kanamaran. If he's not caught now, he will be. Said Nandini. Kundeva gritted her teeth, who knows what tomorrow will bring. She said. Then she said in a rage, the emperor fell ill and lay still, the kingdom itself has turned upside down. What authority do they have to arrest the men I sent to bring the herb? Here I go and ask my father. Goddess. Why bother the emaciated emperor with this matter? Can you ask my brother-in-law? He may not know your wishes. If told, he will act accordingly. Who in this Chola kingdom would dare to go against the wishes of the younger Prati? Said Nandini. Nandini herself won the fight for the two women tigers that day. Kundave sustained multiple injuries on his chest. Princess Peru had to try not to reveal them.